Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, bring it on in. All right, today we've got, bam, Basil Hayden 10 year. All right, it's, it's Basil Hayden time again. So we've got the 10 year version here. We've done some Basil Haydens before. Yep. And so we're exploring the whole line here. So 80 proof, 10 years, Jim Beam product. Let's get into the nose here. And I can't wait. It's got a nice nose Hazel to it. Hazel nutty a bit. Yeah, it's actually, it definitely, from, from going on memory, it's got a little bit more to offer than the regular basil I mean, haze, which you years, would hope at you 10 would, years. You would think that it's really gonna, like, really provide some more kick. I'm mm. with you on the hazelnut. It's caramely, it's vanilla, yeah. it's very standard. Yeah, I would, I would like agree. It seems like a very middle of the road. $65 you paid for this, usually runs 65, 70 bucks. Yep. All right, let's get so, into the taste here, see what happens, cheers. You know, I think there, there must be a difference between 10 years and 10 years because this is an interesting group of 10 years. What do you mean? I, I'm not convinced. <laughs> You're not getting 10 years I'm out not, of this? I'm not getting 10 years of uh, aging. I need to go in for a second sip here because I got a very bitter note off of that first sip. It's better. Second sip. Second sip, yeah. I think that full disclosure, I haven't drank whiskey in a couple weeks. So this is my first pour in like two weeks. Hmm. Um, but so I, you know, I have occasionally. Not, not. Did Did you get it like a bitter tannic, like really tannic? No, I which, got watery and not a lot go, ha, going on. Like, see, that's what I got on the front. It was very maybe watery. Maybe neck pour, like <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Well, we're still on the neck pour. Yeah, yeah. I got like a, and which kind of goes against your saying that like it didn't really seem like it was ten years, but. Yeah, I, I did get a, a really more. like tannic, but it was like bitter. It wasn't like a well-aged wow. tannic. It was yeah. like a bitter. No, but that kind of has evened out here. Let's go in for another sip and then we'll yap about this. Okay, it's starting to get there. It, it just, the first sip was a little bit, either it was me and could be, I just ate um, <laughs> tacos, if I'm honest, so. <laughs> but you had some water. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. it had been an hour, so. Um, I think this is getting, I'm liking this less and less with every sip, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, for me, it's going, it's up. Like, it started at a, a bad place, but I think it, that was probably more, me to blame far more than the, the yeah. whiskey. We might be going total opposite experiences on this one, which does happen sometimes. A lot of times you and I are kind of, you know, on yeah, the same page, but. Uh, yeah, um, Yeah, there's something, there's something about this that seems off. So I will agree with you that there's something about this that is, it, like, I, don't, I was gonna say it's not even a Jim Beam style, but it is. It's, there's just, it's, <coughs> it's missing something in like the initial flavor. Like, yeah. there's a bit of a spice, a wood spice, but it, there's, there's something missing, like it's almost like a lack of character. Oh yeah, it's got that for sure. What I'm finding is like, I'm not a big fan of 80 proof whiskey to begin with. Even you get up to 90 and I start, you know, mm -hmm. really liking it. But 80 is, there's just something about that. From 90 down to 80, there's a huge fall off. And what I don't like about it is that the, the addition of all that water actually, it makes it taste different than I think it should. Like you're, it's not just watering and like tamping down and tempering the flavors. It's actually changing them into something a little bit different. It adds like this, I don't know, there's just something about these lately, the, the lower proof ones. And it's not me being like a proof hound, saying everything has to be cask strength. I it do is. like higher proof stuff. Yes. <laughs> but 
like this, it just doesn't, it feels like it's just off. Like there's something in here that doesn't belong. So I do agree that the flavor is weird. Like, yeah. I think it has a really nice finish and I get the 10 years of barrel age on the finish, but the initial flavor hits very, it's missing something. Like yeah. it doesn't have a sweetness that I expect. It doesn't have like a, I don't know. The like, I want to compare this to the basic Basil Hayden, which I assume this is similar to. Right, because I think that's supposed to be six. To, it used to be eight years, and it's six yeah, now. Right. Well, and we are leading up to maybe do a Basil Hayden flight because we've done a number of these on idea. the channel, and yep. that, that'll be a fun one to do. Are you getting any sort of like a? There's almost a borderline sour note to it. On one hand, having no. like this being my first pour in a couple of weeks, Could be I anymore. almost was expecting the eighty proof to really come in stronger than you know because it's been sure. a while. Yep. And it's really falling very flat. So I think this one, it's not you, and normally it is you, but in this case... I'll, I'll accept that. This is a, a weird one. I want to compare this to the regular Basil Hayden. I think we need to do a video of all of them. Yep. Because I, I tend to be a fan of Basil Hayden. I do acknowledge they're a bit overpriced, but they're overpriced because they're trying to look impressive on the shelf. Well, and so now we have to bring up price every time we talk about Basil Hayden. Sure. 65 to 70. I think you got a deal at 65 because you bought it at Spirits. Yep. Great store. But usually this runs 70 bucks. It's not uncommon to see it for 70. I You've got Russell's Reserve 10 year for $35 out there. There are lots of bourbons at 50 bucks, let's say, that I think are exceptional. It's hard to justify this over those, other than yeah. being someone who has a channel and we've got to kind of do the range of them. And we've talked about how Basil Hayden's kind of is like a good gift whiskey for people who are not looking for- Because it looks so good on the shelf. Looks so good, it's a little more expensive. It is smooth. Mm -hmm. And some people are looking for that because totally. if they're not into the higher proof stuff, if you're going to gift someone a whiskey that looks nice, I would say don't even bother with this one. Give, just do the regular one. Well, I, so recently I did a trip and I met two different people, different settings, both big fans of Basil Hayden, but mm -hmm. they are not really whiskey people. They just, that's what they order because that's what they know. Yeah. And then went to someone else's house and that was the one bottle he had was yeah. Basil Hayden. So I think some people, they do like it and they're perfectly fine with it. But I think... For a person like that, I think the regular one would actually be the better option. Yeah, probably. Yeah, for price-wise, so. for sure, but I think there's just something. This one, I, I don't know. It's I'm gonna have to take a little bit of, I'll try it again maybe tomorrow or whenever, um, and I wanna compare it to the regular, but I, I think we need to do a flight to sure. see if they're the same, but what's different about them? Well, for me, it's a do not recommend on okay. price alone, but you know, it is what it is. All right, well, this has been Basil Hayden Tenure on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Sorry, still drinking. <laughs> Until next time. Until next time. See you next time.